In today's video, we're going to talk about how you can perform data-driven testing for your own software in Python. So first, let me discuss what data-driven testing is. So data-driven testing is a software testing approach where test cases are designed based on different sets of data rather than fixed inputs. It involves executing the same test script with multiple data sets to validate the behavior of the application under various conditions. The purpose of data-driven testing is to increase test coverage, identify potential defects, and verify that the application functions correctly with different input values. So the benefits of data-driven testing, so first, obviously, it's improved test coverage. With a wide range of input data, more scenarios are covered, and this just increases the chances of finding defects. The second is reusability. By separating test data from test scripts, data sets can be reused across different tests, saving time and effort. And finally, scalability. It's easier to scale data-driven tests to handle larger data sets without modifying the test scripts. So this basically will show this. So um, there's some other, uh, uh, some other advantages and benefits of data-driven testing. Uh, so right here, uh, maintainability is also another advantage. So um, changes in test data can be made independently of test scripts, making maintenance more straightforward. Uh, and then also flexibility. Testers can quickly add new test data to verify additional scenarios. So overall, data-driven testing is particularly useful when an application has a large number of test cases with slimmer functionalities and when there is a need to validate various combinations of input data. By adopting this approach, software testing becomes more efficient, effective, and adaptable to change requirements. So later in this video, I'll show you how we can uh, do a simple example of using data-driven testing in Python. And um, yeah. So right here, I've opened my Python um, code that I had from the last two videos. If you haven't watched those videos already, I'd suggest you go back and look at those videos because this does continue off of those videos. Um, and basically, these are the code that we have from the previous videos. But um, if you don't want to watch those videos, that's totally okay as well because I won't be uh, explaining off of the knowledge from those videos. So for data-driven testing, so I guess the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead to this main folder here and I'm going to create a new directory and I'm going to call it data. Under this directory, let me make a file. So I'm going to create a file and I'm going to name it uh, test.csv. And under this test.csv file, I'm just going to copy and paste some stuff over. Um, so copy this, and paste that, and then go ahead and save this. And now I can close this. So you'll see later why I did this, but um, basically, um, you'll, basically this is some of the data that we'll be using later. Now, next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go under a test folder and I'm gonna create a new uh, file for today. So I'm just gonna be a Python file and I'm gonna name it test underscore selenium data driven. Py. And notice that I used test underscore. Um, this is a requirement uh, for naming of your files if you're using uh, PyTest. But um, if you want to know exactly why, I would suggest you go back and watch the previous videos again. But just, uh, just I just want you to note that if uh, you don't intend to go back and watch the previous videos. But yeah, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to import some packages on top. So I'm just going to go ahead and paste some stuff. So the first thing we import is we import time, we import um, uh, from Selenium, we import WebDriver, we import some other stuff like the Py, the PyTest, and import CSV as well. Now, after I imported these things, um, give me one second. I'm just gonna see what is going on here. Why is it grayed out? But um, yeah, so next thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to show you how we can um, basically uh, do uh, do data-driven testing. So first, I'm going to define a new function, and this is going to, into, I'm actually going to start with this tag. It's just pytest dot mixture. And I'm going to, so this is a tag basically saying that we can pass this function in later into another uh, function as a parameter. So I'm going to define it and call it Firefox. 
And essentially what this function will do is it will start a web driver for Firefox. So I'm just, since this is something that we've seen a lot of times already, I'm just gonna go ahead and just copy and paste it. So we start a web driver for Firefox, we maximize the window and so on. Now we can go on to the portion that's specific to data-driven testing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a tag, pytest.mark.parameterize. Test dot mark dot parameterize and inside here I'm gonna name something golf and now I'm gonna define golf as this list right here. So copy a list. So I define this golf as this list right here. And then next I'm gonna define a function called test underscore search golf and I'm gonna pass the Firefox function from above because it has a fixture tag and now I'm going to pass golf from above as well and now inside here what I can do is I can do firefox dot get uh, and I'm going to use the URL to my website that we're testing on so I'm going to go ahead and paste that URL so this is the website we'll be testing on and then I'm going to say we're going to sleep for three seconds once we get to that website and then what we're going to do is we're going to search. Uh, we're going to define the element search box using um, the by name as and we're going to say it's search string. Uh, and again, if you're not familiar with this, what you can basically do is, for example, if I go to the website that we want to test, um, which is under here, golf right here. If I go to search here, and I click right click and I click inspect. Uh, and then right here, you see that by name is search string. So that's how I did it basically. But yeah, so define search box. Now I define the search button. And again, we'll define this as uh, using this as well. So go ahead. I'm just going to paste it over because I don't want to mess up the elements. Uh, so Firefox dot find element. This time we're using XPath instead, which is another locator that you can find using the same method. Uh, and then after that, basically what we're going to do now is we're going to say for the search box, we're going to send keys. And what keys are we going to send? Well, we're going to send our parameters uh, golf. And then we say that for the search button, after you send those keys, we're going to click the search button so that it actually searches for it. And now go ahead and save. And let me run this for you and see what happens. So I dragged it over and then basically you see that it's searching for the golf course uh, and it's found Tiger Golf. Um, and actually every time it opens a new window, so I just have to drag it over because it opens on my other window. And again, it searches for golf course and it'll open another window on my other uh, monitor as well. I drag it over, maximize it. We'll see that it searches this golf course. I click search. And so those are the three tests that we tested for, uh, which is Tiger Golf, Golf Locations, and Heritage Point Golf Course. So that's basically how you can uh, do data-driven testing with these different uh, variables that you define using the parameterize uh, tick, uh, tag. Uh, next, I'm going to define a function, and I'm just going to define it as such. I'm going to call it load CSV. And basically what it does is it reads through the CSV file and it will, um, it will read that CSV file and basically it will read it and then it will load it into a list. Um, and for this, I'm actually, I think I messed up the path right here. Uh, this is not a Python Selenium project. Instead, this should be Python tutorial one. So, tutorial one and then we have that so now after that let me define the next thing so this time instead of using so this time we'll still use the same parameter actually it'll be pytest dot mark dot parameterize 
parameterize. And we're going to still define it as golf. But this time, we can define golf using this load CSV right here. And so we're defining it as whatever this thing, this function returns. And under that, I'm going to make a new function. It's going to be test select country. This time, we're testing for a different functionality. We're passing Firefox and golf as well. But then uh, under there, we'll do the same stuff in the beginning. So um, essentially, right here, we see that we're doing the same stuff still. Um, we're basically searching for, um, we're basically going to this URL. We're going to find these two different elements. And then after that, what we'll do is we'll actually do select C, which is this first element is where you enter your filter. We're going to send keys again, and we're going to send golf. And then we're going to do filter dot click. Filter dot click. Click. And let me run this and show you what's going on. So again, it'll open on my other monitor, so I have to drag it over. But uh, here we go. I dragged it over. Under this country right here, it'll select Australia, and it filters. Uh, now it goes on to the next test. Remember, we had four entries into our CSV file. So uh, drag this over again. Again, it'll select a country right here, Canada, and it'll drag it over. Uh, two more to go. Maximize. It'll select a country up there, Iceland. And then final one. I pull this over, maximize it. It'll select a country again, right here, Mexico, and filters it. And now it's all done. So I'll go ahead and close these windows. Um, and it says four tests passed. So yeah, so this is how you can perform data-driven testing in Python. I just showed you a simple example using a uh, different a CSV file uh, and just when you de determine and define your own uh, variables. But yeah, if you found this video helpful, please give this video a like and subscribe to our channel. And we look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you for listening.